Okay, so we're going to talk about relative humidity today. Uh, I'm going to have you uh, look at a few things and, and learn how to identify and, and calculate what the relative humidity is and, and what relative humidity is. is something that we hear a lot about. Uh, we have a sense for what it is, but uh, we'll, we'll talk more specifically about it. But for the first thing on these notes that I want you to look at, um, if we look at the air pressure, uh, here's your air pressure. What happens to air pressure as you go up in the atmosphere? That's what I'd like you to think about for a second um, and fill that in. As the altitude increases, the pressure does what? What does the pressure do? And uh, what I'd like you to do is take a second and graph that. What's that graph going to look like and what's that pressure look like? Um, and I'll, the change in pressure as you go up in altitude. So that, that I'd like you to do first. So, so pause this, uh, fill that in. Okay, once you have that done, uh, I'll check it and uh, we can go on. But relative humidity uh, is, what, what, think about it for a second. What is relative humidity? Where have you heard that before? And you've probably heard it. It's the amount of moisture in the air. It's how much humidity. Humidity is how much moisture there is in the air relative to how much the atmosphere can hold. So it's a relative comparison. It's a comparison between uh, the maximum amount and how much is in the air. That is uh, measured in a percent. And if, you, if we do take a look at that, um, this is what you can see. So here's it, a, just a basic example of this. Um, you have water at 100%. Uh, the parcel of air, if you imagine this bubble, is a, a parcel of air or a, the room that you're, we're sitting in. Imagine that this bubble, this circle, represents that. If there's all the water that it can hold um, or that can evaporate into that air is in that air, then it's at 100%. If we heat up the air, warmer air holds more moisture. So if I don't add any more moisture to the air, I have the same amount of water vapor, but I heat up the air, the relative humidity, the amount of humidity compared to how much is in there, the amount of water compared to what's in there, goes down. And if I heat it up even more, it can hold more water vapor, even though I have the same amount of water vapor in there. Uh, it's the relative humidity is going to go down because relative to how much it can hold, it has less water in it compared to how much it can hold. So that's where our relative comes from, um, this relative value. And you can see that as we heat up air, the amount of moisture can hold increases. And that's important. And, and we use that all the time. Uh, you use a hair dryer. You use a dryer to dry your clothes. We don't put it on cold. We, we have hot air um, using moving through that uh, those clothes because that warm air will make more of that water evaporate and dry the clothes out faster or dry your hair out faster. So the amount of moisture that's in the air is is humidity, and when we compare it to how much the air can hold, that's relative humidity. When it has as much water as it can hold, it's called saturated. And if it's saturated, we just saw that when we had all the water in there, that was at 100%. So as we were talking, as I was just talking, we used that, this example, uh, warmer the temperature, the more moisture it can hold. So if we have a hair dryer, it can heat up the air and dry our hair faster. We use a hair dryer to dry out our hair or dry out our clothes more quickly and as temperature increases what happens to our relative humidity? Our relative humidity uh, goes down uh, as I increase the temperature and we saw that with that little diagram um, and so if we if I have you do that um, here here's our temperature and here's our relative humidity as our temperature increases as this goes up the relative humidity goes down so what's that graph going to look like? It's going to look like this. It's a negative slope, right? So as the temperature goes up, that goes down. Now, air conditioners are, are a strange one. I, and I have that on here because I want you to think about that for a second. Where is it that, what's happening to the water um, when we're talking about 
um, hair dryers, or sorry, when we're talking about air conditioners. Air conditioning, we actually are doing the opposite of these two. We, we're not, instead of heating up the air, we're actually cooling the air down. And that leads to some interesting things. If you've ever noticed on a, a hot summer day, if, you had an air, if you've been in an air conditioned car and you get out of the car, come back to it, you'll notice that there's a puddle of water underneath the car. Well, that's because we've taken the air, we've cooled it off, and the moisture that was in that air came out of the air. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. And that water that's left over came from the air and it evaporated, not evaporated, condensed out of the air. Okay. Now, if we look at what we use to um, determine relative humidity, we use a couple different instruments. Uh, one's called a hygrometer, that's stationary usually, and then we have something called a sling psychrometer. A sling psychrometer we'll use in the lab. Uh, they're instruments. Uh, this is a, a very simple example of a sling psychrometer. Uh, here's a, another example. This is just a, a picture of an animation of one. And there are two thermometers on, on the sling psychrometer. One is dipped in water, has a cloth on it, and the other one is not. It's dry. And the dry bulb temperature gives you the current air temperature. The wet bulb, which is the one that's in the water, it gives you the evaporation temperature. And it spins around and water is evaporating from this. And as water evaporates, and we, we know this from lots of different experiences, if you get out of a, a, the pool and it's a breezy day, or you get out of the shower and, and it's um, the wind, uh, the, there's a breeze over you, um, the, the water, you get cold. The water is evaporating, and in water, as water evaporates, it cools you down. And here's that water evaporating, cooling the temperature down. The more water that evaporates, the more it cools down, and so you get a bigger difference between these two temperatures, which is hugely important when we're talking about relative humidity. Because if you have air that is saturated, you're not going to get any water evaporating off of that wet bulb thermometer. So if you have air at relative humidity, at 100% relative humidity, you're not going to get any evaporation. If you have low relative humidity, you get a lot of evaporation because there's more water vapor, more place in this air for the water vapor to go. And so as you spin this thermometer around, you're going to get water evaporating, which causes that temperature to go down. And then you get a dip bigger difference between your dry bulb temperature and your wet bulb temperature. And I'll show you in another video how to use the chart on the reference table to help you figure out what, rel what the relative humidity is. Okay. The last concept is this idea of dew point temperature. Um, just to take a step back, this hygrometer is uh, stationary. Again, it's got a wet cloth here. Um, the sling psychrometer is one that you just spin around and the water wicks away from this wet bulb and, that, and stays on that dry bulb. So you have the wet bulb and dry bulb on both of those. But dew, we've all seen it on grass. In the summertime, you can see it, and the water uh, is in the morning miraculously in little drops all over the ground. You walk around and your sh shoes get all wet. Well, that's just the temperature. That's because dew forms when the temperature of the air reaches saturation. So you get 100% humidity, and um, the water, the air is saturated, and what happens is the extra water that can't be, can't fit in the air at that point anymore comes out of the air and forms as dew on the ground. And I got a, a just a short animation or a short little example of this. So if we take air, let's imagine this air uh, is has a certain amount of water vapor in it. This is the maximum amount of water that, that air can hold um, and this is the amount of moisture in that air. If we look at this, this is about uh, maybe a little bit less than 50%, so um, it's it's pretty close. So we might say that the relative humidity there is is 45%. Let's say so we got 45% humidity here. If I take that air and I cool it down from 20 degrees down to 15 degrees, it doesn't hold as much water vapor. So, but I didn't remove any water out of that air. I have the same amount of water in the air, and so. 
what happened to the relative humidity when I cooled that air down from 20 degrees to 15 degrees? Well, what's the relative humidity here? Relative to how much this can fill this box, how much is it filled? We could say it's probably 70%, uh, maybe 75% filled. So uh, it went from being relative humidity of about 40% to about 70%, let's say. Not quite, maybe three quarters. So we got cooling this down. We see our humidity is going up. When I cool this down further, what happens? We're at, it's that basically that box is full. So I'm at my saturation point. I'm at 100%. For the, compared to how much water that, that box can hold, that box is full. I've got 100% humidity. So I went from about 45% to 75%. I cool it down to 10 degrees. I get to 100% um, humidity. And if I cool that down even further to 5 degrees, what happens? Well, I can only fill it up to a certain amount. I can only fill it up this much, right? I can only fill that box, that parcel of air up so much. Well, what happens is I'm still at 100% relative humidity, but instead of now being in a water vapor, what this water is up here is this water is going to come out of the air because the air can't hold it. It comes out of the air and condenses on the ground. And this is dew. That is the dew that comes out of the ground or goes out of the air onto the ground and becomes the dew that we see on the grass in the summertime. So we have right here when it reaches saturation at this point at 10 degrees that is the dew point. So this is the dew point. At 10 degrees Celsius that's the point at which dew will start to form if you cool that air down anymore. So as we cool air down we see the relative humidity going up. It can't get any more than 100%. It has to stop at 100% and so it becomes this water has to go someplace, it can't stay in the air, so it has to condense. And it condenses on any surface, it'll condense on your car. It, if it's below zero degrees, um, if it's below freezing, then what's that liquid water turn into? It turns into frost. So we get frost in places when it's below zero and liquid water condensing uh, when it's above zero degrees. So that's humidity and dew point and how dew forms, these are really key concepts when we start talking about weather and, and how we um, get clouds to form. So take a, take a minute, um, have me check your, um, check your notes, and then we'll, we'll move on to uh, dry bulb, wet bulb temperatures, and, and figuring out um, how to calculate the relative humidity and dew point. All right.